today's weekly update, I want to share with you some Bible deep cuts. One of the cool things about reading the Bible is starting to pay attention to intertextual connections. In other words, the way the Bible refers back to itself as a way of cluing the reader into connections that we ought to be making. In Genesis 10, as it lists for us the sons of Japheth, it says, from these, the coastland peoples spread in their lands. The coastland peoples is a connection to the sons of Japheth, who are the ones that are the furthest from the promised land. They're the ones that spread out through modern day Turkey and the Black Sea and the Baltics and Russia. It's sort of like the far flung peoples. The, the text of Genesis uses the coastlands to refer to these peoples. Well, then what's interesting is as the Bible goes forward, when the Old Testament is talking about God gathering the worship of all the nations, it says even the coastland peoples are going to worship the Messiah. Here's a couple spots. Psalm 72, verse 10. May the kings of Tarshish and of the coastlands render him tribute. May all kings fall down before him. All nations serve him. This is talking about the Davidic king and the desire that all nations would come and serve him. The prophet Isaiah picks up a similar reference in chapter 42. He says, you, you might be familiar with this when he's talking about uh, the servant of the Lord, a bruised reed he will not break and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. We love these verses because they remind us of the gentleness of the Lord Jesus. But it goes on to say, he will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his law. This picture is of the far-flung peoples of the earth longing for the law of the Lord, longing to come under his leadership, longing to be his disciples. And then later on in Isaiah 42, as it goes on in this song about the coming servant of the Lord, it says, let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. So this theme that gets teed up in Genesis 10 of the coastlands being the furthest away uh, from the promised land, the Old Testament prophets continue to hope that the coastlands will one day worship the Lord. And what a wonderful fulfillment we experience in our own day as we see the gospel go forward to the farthest reaches of the earth and people everywhere worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. So as you read the Bible and as you wonder, who are the coastlands? Why does it keep talking about the coastlands? Now you know. It's Genesis 10 that sets up that theme in the scriptures. I hope that helps you appreciate more deeply what it means to read the Bible carefully and to pay attention to some of these intertextual themes that it sets up. I'm looking forward to finishing our series in Genesis 1 through 11 next Sunday. It's the last sermon in the series. And then right after Thanksgiving, we'll be into the Advent season. So I'll see you next week for another week here.